again, it's student webinar time. We're on number 70. The topic that we have that was submitted by one of our CCO club members, I believe it was a student, I didn't double check the name, they wanted to know about coding for RH negative factor pregnancies. This is a really interesting topic, and so I'm going to give you background and a synopsis of the scenarios, what this actually is, because it helps us understand the coding process when we understand what the disease process is. And uh, you may or may not have been exposed to that particular blood type but I hope that you'll be real well educated when we get done by the end of this. Uh, I remember when I was in high school, I was in biology and we did a big study on blood types and we all tested our own blood types and it was really fascinating. They gave us a little card and you'd be able to put the three dots of blood on this little card and then put a chemical on it and be, the way it reacted revealed what your blood type was and after that I was really fascinated with blood so again we I can't remember if we did the RH factor I think we did but it's so long ago I don't remember now and I remember looking at our blood under a microscope just fascinating stuff but then even at that age I was well into being uh, absorbed in disease process so the RH factor, that's the rhesus factor, and it actually comes from rhesus monkeys, uh, not rhesus peanut butter cups. <laughs> it's spelled different. You'll see the spelling here in a few slides. But it's actually a protein that surrounds the red blood cells. So this is my little pseudo red blood blood cells because they try I couldn't figure out how to make a concave so if you are RH uh, positive if you have an RH positive factor we'll say that you're green and if you're negative you will have that layer the outer layer uh, is missing of the protein for uh, this for your individual blood cells now it's normal to be either or. However, most uh, I think most people are probably positive, but uh, it, it could be. I, I've got a little uh, diagram of what the most common blood types are. Now, I know that I'm O positive and I know my husband's A positive, which is, an unusual, is a more rare blood type. Uh, and we're not going to get into universal donors and, and all of that stuff. But how you become positive, now this is a little bit backwards, how you get an RH positive factor is that your parents have to be RH positive or one of your parents have to be RH positive to be able to inherit. It is a genetic trait. So it's inherited, and if you're positive, that means their blood cells also have that protein ring around them that's positive. If you're a negative, that means that you did not inherit that protein ring. So your blood is different. That's about as basic as it can get. Now let's let's whoops let's go a little more in depth oh no let's see oh oh i know what i did sorry now what happens when you have an rh factor mother that's negative and her baby in utero is positive they actually uh, your babies don't transfer blood so I know we think sometimes that it does. They are hooked by an umbilical cord. However, unless something happens like they have an amniocentesis or there is a rupture of membrane somewhere or at the delivery point, that blood is not given to the baby. So your blood doesn't pass back and forth. Now there is a blood barrier. There is some medications and, and things that can pass through to the baby but again they're not getting 
uh, our blood per se. So again, if you have an RH positive fetus uh, and the mother is negative, then if there's any exposure, the mother's body will reject that. So it's, it's the same as if you were a, um, you're a B type blood type and somebody tries to give you uh, a blood type that uh, you can't have like I think O is the universal donor. I can't remember which one it is but a blood type that isn't the same of yours that's why they type and cross match blood or if you were a um, negative blood type and they try to give you a positive blood type your body will reject that it'll build up antibiotics and it ha like having an allergic reaction and they're called anti RH antibiotics um, when this happens it ultimately those red blood cells they they have an allergic reaction they swell and they can rupture and thus what happens when our blood cells our red blood cells are being destroyed or they're not functioning properly it, you can become anemic so therefore you have to be very very careful this can cause miscarriages this can cause um, other conditions to happen to the baby they can become anemic and and so on so uh, again it's something that they monitor but if they know ahead of time then they can take care of that so over here in the yellow box is the most common blood type is O positive yay ding ding that's me 35 percent O negative 13 percent a positive 30 percent a negative 8 percent and then B positive 8 percent B negative 2 a B positive 2 and the most rare is a B negative okay so if you have a positive baby and you have a negative mother there's incompatibility and problems can occur so what do we do about it well there's several things you can do you can give them an RH immunoglobulin and that is just a fun word to say everybody just kind of say that in your head immunoglobulin <laughs> And you should learn how to spell it, which it's not that hard because it sounds like how it's spelled. So if anybody gives you a hard time about um, your intelligence level or something, say, uh, well, I can spell immunoglobulin and I happen to know what it is, you know, or something. So uh, this RHLG, which is the abbreviation for RH immunoglobulin, they can give that to the uh, mother to help them produce antibodies and then this will prevent the baby from developing anemia uh, also it'll help the mother with future pregnancies now they give this in a shot and I'm going to show you the codes that we're going to use for that at the end but it it is something that may have to happen more than once because it's kind of like an allergic process right so if you're allergic to something and you're wanting to desensitize yourself you're allergic to cats then what you're going to do is you're going to take shots to build up that immune system and so with every pregnancy and delivery you're uh, going to have a and the baby's an RH positive baby then you're going to require another dose of RH immunoglobulins to have to so that we don't have that incompatibility occurring again now if I remember right in the researches that I was doing they'll often give a shot to the mother in the beginning and I think before delivery uh, I could be wrong about that I've got some more information in the slides as um, we talk about that so don't quote me how often that you get it uh, do a little research to double check I'm but I'm just curious right now how many of you know your blood type and if you do know your blood type uh, are you you don't have to say what your blood type is but are you negative or positive do you know your RH factor so I'd be curious to see everybody that's uh, online with us live go ahead and put in the chat what your uh, uh, RH factor is if you know it and I've already told you I'm O positive so my factor is positive and 
that means that, and my husband is too, so all of our children are positive. And so that they passed on that positive uh, trait. Now, the only way that you can find out is to have a blood test. And the blood test is really easy to do. Um, I don't think you can get those like home kits or something. I don't remember how we got those way back in high school because honestly, I just had my high school reunion and it was 35 years ago. So I think I did that. That was graduation. So it would have been almost four. <laughs> it was like 36 or seven. I, I don't think it was when I was a senior. So again, so we've got some negatives. We got some positive. But Deborah said, how do I find out? Well, it's probably in your medical record. If you've had any procedures done or lab work, they've uh, had, you know, as far as um, anytime you have a medical surgery, they probably uh, type and cross match you just to make sure that you know, if they have a complication and you start to bleed out, they want to make sure that they can give you blood. But it's always good to check with your daughter, doctor. And if you give blood, they check you at, as well. So I encourage you to donate blood. My um, number two daughter is a, she gets t-shirts and all the signs because she gives blood often. So I, I really encourage you to do that. Lorette is O negative. So, um, Leah says, I found out when I was pregnant only um, uh, just sharing. Yeah, that's so that's a lot of times. How, and when we when we had our babies, I remember that they they would tell me what their blood type was in the beginning. But then I my children range from age, you know, 33 all the way down to 15. So uh, it's like the last couple ones they didn't. But all the beginning ones I remember and it was on their little card that they put on their little um kit. Uh, Deborah says it was a popular class experiment in high school science classes in the 60s and 70s. So I would have been the 80s. But yeah, yeah. So it, it's it, they had these little cards that you could do. Okay, I'm getting off topic. Um, again, you can see that I love I love blood. I love blood and guts too. So the RH factor again, uh, additional doses could be needed of this RH immunoglobulin uh, if you have um, an ectopic pregnancy, miscarriage, or an abortion. Now, when you look at documentation and everything, don't get upset if you um, uh, you see the term abortion when it's a miscarriage because that, it, that term is synonymous. And um, uh, so... Uh, don't don't get confused you know don't don't be upset about that uh, and then uh, after an amniocentesis because then you're breaking that that barrier a cvs they could do fetal blood sampling for that reason or anytime they were doing any fetal surgery now again if you're positive then it's not a problem uh bleeding during pregnancy trauma to the abdomen if you had a fall um, uh, any type of uh, a fall would definitely indicate it because that baby is sitting there in a bowl of um, liquid and it's just kind of like your brain and if you were to trip or fall that baby's going to bounce in there and you could have a little bit of minute bleeding uh, perhaps uh, and if there was any attempt to flip a, a a breech baby and sometimes they would do that by rotating you know they would one of the things they do is they tilt you uh, they have you lay with your feet up in the air and your head down and then they start manipulating trying to get that baby to flip a little bit so uh, again they you get a shot before 28 weeks usually and I believe again right before um, the baby is born uh, now you start building up those antibodies, but um, ultimately it's the baby that we're concerned about. Uh, the mother, uh, I don't think, has any side effects, uh, but they also will check the baby routinely uh, via the ultrasound exams to make sure that everything's going well, because this is a complication of pregnancy. This is something that they want to be uh, careful with. Now, most of the time, though, they give the shot. They don't have any any complications after that. Okay. Uh, now, let's look at some codes that you need to be aware of. Z31.82. That's an encounter 
for having that positive or negative incompatibility status. And this is a procreative management. Uh, when we talk about the um, different terms, it's not always what you think. So a fetus is a substance of con, uh, con, uh, conception and a proactive, a procreative management is anything that has to do with um, fertility, uh, reversal of contraception uh, uh, or sterilization status, so getting your tubes tied, having a vasectomy, or looking into genetic carriers, status, family planning, and anything that's associated to planning for children. But Remember when I said in the beginning that RH factor is genetic. So therefore, that investigation into genetic carrier status is a Z31 code. And then you have a list under Z31. What is it actually for? What are we looking for? RH factor and that incompatibility status. Well, then what I did was I went and looked at those codes and I use find a code and I have coding clinics. So I thought, let's just see, is there any coding clinics around this? There has to be. And there was, there were two that were significant that I found that they were very similar. What happens with coding clinic is they're the leaders uh, for diagnosis codes and they will uh, whenever a scenario or a situation arises where a deciding factor needs to be made, they're the experts. They're a panel of experts that give their rendering. I kind of think of them as the Supreme Court for ICD-10. <laughs> so you have a question and then they come, they do the research and they say, no, this is the way to do it. This is what we're going to do going forward uh, or to take care of any questions that come out. So the question that came in that said, um, kind of what we talked about, we have a mother that is negative and she delivers at term, so that we'll say 40 weeks without complications, everything was fine, but she got the Rogam shot prophylactically and I'll show you the information about Rogram, it's a RH immunoglobulin, that's the name brand, uh, during the admission. Uh, would you code Z31.82 encounter for RH incompatibility status uh, or is the code 036.093 uh, in their, you know, um, more character, another character there, uh, maternal care for other rhesus, it's right off the rhesus monkey, a, uh, isoimmunization third trimester more appropriate. So what do you guys think? Are we going to use the Z code or the O code? So go ahead and put in the chat what you think is going to be the appropriate. And this is a common question when we're looking at this. And I suspect that uh, the person that asked this question about the RH factor coding uh, ran into a scenario similar to this and wanted to know, okay, uh, you know, are we coding the Z31 code or are we coding the O36 code? Uh, Sue says we're going to code the O code. Very good. Sue's first gold star for Sue to give her, for her to be the first one to give her thoughts. Anybody else feel free to type them in. Okay I'm going to go ahead and change the screen and I know sometimes it takes a minute for there's a delayed reaction for that to catch my eye. Let's see what it says. All right. You're going to assign the 026.893 because that stands for other specified pregnancy related condition. Other is signified by the code set as, hey, we have definition. We just don't have a code for it at that time. And then, uh, uh, so it says third trimester, along with other codes to represent the delivery, the standard delivery codes and stuff. And then Z67.91, unspecified blood type, because we don't know if they're A, or, or, uh, A B, B, or O, but we know they're RH negative, or this wouldn't even be a scenario, right? And that's the blood typing code. The Z67 is where you type and type match and assign code. May be assigned as an additional diagnosis if the blood type is not known 
And then if the blood type is known or a more specific code in the category of Z67, you can look at those and Laurette says, yeah, I use Z67. Very good. Now, let's say why. Let, let's look at this. It says codes, uh, the 036 code, that's not pertinent. No, that's not going to be the one we want. So it says maternal care for rhesus um, isoimmunization are not appropriate because the patient does not have this. They don't have the isoimmunization, meaning this was never a problem. And then it's prophylactic. That's the word. Prophylaxis is being given to prevent that condition. So it's not, it's just like you saying that a person has HIV when they don't, or you give that patient diabetes and they don't have that. They are not an 036. Uh, also, you're not going to code Z31.82 because it's not in compatibility status. They haven't reached that incompatibility. It's not appropriate uh, to assign that code. And also that code can only be used as a first listed diagnosis. So uh, very interesting. Now let's move on to another scenario. A little bit similar, except for we've got a 28 uh, week RHD negative pregnant patient with a history of previously de uh, delivery of a RH uh, an RH positive baby. Okay, so she's had a baby before. She's negative, and the baby was positive. Uh, they receive a prophylactic injection of the anti D uh, immunoglobulin during her prenatal visit, and they kind of like to give that before 28 weeks. The patient does not have isoimmunization. What's the appropriate code for the, that particular visit? So this is a week, 28 week visit. This is not a delivery. So what are we doing? You're going to do the Z34.83. So this is your encounter for the supervision of the pregnancy. It is a normal pregnancy at this state the third trimester to indicate this is a normal pregnancy. Uh, you're going to also code the Z31.82 that there uh, it's an encounter for RH incompatibility status. And then you're going to code Z3A.28 because it's 28 weeks of gestation. So look here again. This is given as a prophylactic measure and the patient does not have the isoimmunization so you're not going to code the 036.01 and the use of the medication does not mean the pregnancy is not normal. That's where the hiccup gets to be. Just because they're giving the, the shot doesn't mean that something's wrong at that point. Okay, and then the RH factor is a protein, of course, and it just goes on to explain what I've already explained to you. So that's really pertinent to understand, right? So again, uh, what about billing this scenario? Uh, and I do want you guys to know that at the end of the slide deck, I put in the resource uh, everywhere that I got information as well as how to locate those two specific coding clinics. Now, I pay and have access to coding clinic, but um, or, uh, CCO does, but if you don't, sometimes if you know where to find it um, by that information, you can go Google that and find other articles and stuff where it was referenced. So that's helpful for you to do to do that. Uh, coding clinic is very valuable. However, it is also very expensive. And unless you need it for your job, uh, first of all, you might check and see if your employer will, will pay for it or reimburse you for it. Um, otherwise, a lot of the times you can get it through uh, the way you research. So be careful uh, about spending money that you don't have to. Or you can just look up the, you can join the CCO club and we'll look it up for you. <laughs> so how do we bill this? Uh, you're going to bill for the injection. And there is uh, one of the following quotes. Are you going to give it in an IM, uh, full dose? Are you going to give a mini dose? Or are they giving it IV? Now, if 
I, I will make an assumption here that, you know, if they're giving it at 28 weeks in the office, it's going to be, a, a, you know, a, an IM shot. But if it's at delivery where they're giving you that second dose, I, I'm sure they just shoot it into the IV probably uh, again so that's why you'd want it and I don't know what constitutes a mini dose uh, I wasn't able to find that in the research so uh, you might be able to to see why they would give a mini dose versus a, a, a full dose now the example of the full dose intramuscularly uh, is a non-medicare patient Okay, and then so you're going to use the 90384, and then you would also code for the POKE, which is um, 96372, and that's where you're doing therapeutic or diagnostic injections. You would say what the me medication is and, uh, and how it was being administered. But be careful, because some payers, it stated, won't pay with a CPT code, they actually want the uh, HixPix code, the level two code. And uh, even though that's a Medicare patient, usually we use HixPix for Medicare, not always. Some pay payers want you to identify it with the HixPix code, and that would be the J2790 uh, for the, um, uh, the immunoglobulin. All right, so again, be careful with that. And I'm sure if you know your payers, you would know which is more appropriate that you're billing for. So let's kind of recap the codes that we've looked at so far. If we need to do blood topic, typing, we're going to use Z01.83. Okay, that gives us for that code is used both for blood typing saying what what are you? Are you a, you know, O, A, B, A, B? And that also, you know, when you blood type, you automatically do the negative and the positive with that. So you're going to know, and therefore, that's why it's, you know, whether you're being typed for your RH factor or your full blood type, it doesn't matter. Z01.83 is the code for that. And it's an encounter for code. That's why you came in. And then, we're going to identify the blood type. Now, if we don't, and that's a Z67 code. However, if we don't know the blood type, so for the examples that we were given in the, the coding clinic scenario, we didn't know what type they were, but we were able to identify if they were positive or negative, and that's 0 0.90 for positive and 0 0.91 for negative. So pay attention to those codes that fourth character is the blood type. So there's a, a specific character if you're an O, an A, B, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I wasn't going to type all of that in there for you because you just need a launching point to be able to look at your code. Now, if we're giving a full dose, I am, it's going to be 90384. It's going to be 96372 for the uh, injection. And then you're going to list the substance. Now, again, there's different ways to do that. Uh, and the nurses type, they write everything out that they're giving. The medications have specific numbers and uh, in DC numbers, I think they're called. Uh, so uh, again, there's a lot of information that goes into that. And then if you need the uh, J code for HixPix, it's J2790. Let's talk about um, what this actually is. So wrapping up, think about your questions because we're about to wrap up. The generic name is RHOD, immunoglobulin, human. The brand name is Rogam. Um, I don't know if there's other generic names. Sometimes there are. I, I just went ahead and looked up Rogam. Uh, again, maybe, maybe there is more but it gives you a description of what Rogam is. And I thought it was very interesting though, is, you know, we, we are looking at it as that immune response, the immunoglobulin, but look here, it was also used for the treatment of immune thrombocytopenic purpurea or ITP. And that was interesting because that is what's uh, done when they're trying to blow a clot 
for a person that has a, not a hemophragic sh uh, stroke, but an ischemic stroke, they use ITP to do that. So I didn't know that, uh, that, it, and again, I may be a little off on that, but that's what I was picking up off the top of my head is what ITP is, it is so that's fascinating and had no idea. We, need to research that and get more information because that's cool. And also, if there's been a mismatch of blood type and you're given the wrong blood type at any time and stuff like that, uh, then blood transfusions, then uh, they would give you this shot. So uh, the single dose is 300 um, uh, MCGs, which is well, I can't remember what MGC is, not male equivalents, but of the Rogram, and it's uh, usually, though, most associated with pregnancies. All right, guys, any questions that you have, uh, go ahead and ask them now. We'll go over them. This was really an interesting topic uh, because, again, I think you guys got how much I enjoyed the, the blood and guts aspect of what we do, but we don't often talk about the uh, the Hicks fix codes. They're so easy to look up because they're just really the same as the CPT codes, you know. Mm. And all those resources. Let me just give you a quick peek, peek at those. So there's the coding clinics, how to look those up. And uh, again, if you are part of our CCO club, you get a copy of this slide deck and our students do as well. And then you get the transcript as well as the um, continued access and the conversations that we have over there in the course. I'm not seeing any questions. So thank you guys for joining us. Keep those questions coming in and uh, putting them in the club so we know what you're looking for. Don't forget to hit the like button for us. That helps the thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, do that. Uh, uh, don't know, And if you're over on LinkedIn, feel free to look for me as well as you know, being part of the CCO group on LinkedIn and Facebook. All right. Bye, guys. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.